Hi everybody, I'm Katie Davis, if you haven't joined me before, and I am a writer, I'm an illustrator, I'm a marketing coach for writers, and I'm a video marketing maven. And you can find me at katiedavis.com, and I also created a video course for writers called Video Idiot Bootcamp. And today I'm going to be going over ways to get press coverage. So uh, there's a lot to go over, and if you have any questions, I would like you to put it in, is it this way? This way, yes, this way, at least for my side, um, to put in questions. And after I go over tons of stuff, I'm going to answer your questions. And I even have notes. So um, the other thing is, you know, I've talked to you guys about this easy marketing in a box product that I'm creating. So I might even include some of this in that. So if uh, there's anything you want to know, ask. All right, so let's get started. Uh, to, we're going to focus today on how to get press coverage. And it's really kind of step-by-step, um, -step, easy. There's no learning curve. Um, it's kind of logical. Uh, it just depends on if you actually do these things. It just matters um, whether or not you take the steps to get started. Um, so. Just get comfy, you can take some notes, and let's get going. So the good news is uh, you know people already. You know people online, you're getting involved, scratchy nose, sorry. <laughs> um, so make a list. Just start making a list. You can do an Excel list. I hate Excel, but you can make a list with Excel or on make a Word document. Um, Think about who is in your niche, whether you write fiction, nonfiction, kids' books, indie, traditional, whatever. Make a list. Who are your top 10 niche influencers? Um, which ones already know who you are and interact with you, like me, if you're coming to this regularly, or you listen to my podcast and you send in questions, things like that. Or if you're in 12 by 12 uh, or on Facebook groups, who do you already have in uh, relationships with? What bloggers, um, who do you know on social media, what, whose products have you bought, you know, I mean, those people know who you are, uh, which businesses or niches on Facebook and Pinterest and uh, LinkedIn, those kinds of things, which forums do you regularly get involved in. Okay, now out of that list, I want you to make a list of those people who are connected to press. For example, people who write for Huffington Post or maybe a local paper. All right. So m maintain a relationship with those people. Right? They're influencers. And as I always teach, social media, what's the op operative word? Social. So you want to take time to nurture those relationships and take the time to write comments that genu genuinely validate those people's opinions. Be Transparent though, be genuine, be real, acknowledge their expertise if you agree. Or if you don't, start a dialogue. You know, be there, um, support their efforts. And uh, it, it requires a little bit of effort on your part, but done it honestly and intelligently, this is worth your time investment. Okay, this is, will pay off in the end. Um, you want to take who you know to the next level, and this will help. It'll build relationships before you need them, okay? And it's it's not just using people, it's actually, um, it's, it's networking. It's like the old version of networking. And then when it's time, you can ask for tips or recommendations to help get the word out. Uh, and all you need is, is one person to retweet you, a simple share that one key journalist um, or blogger, or some big blogger shares, and it could get your book out to tons of people who will or book or work or or your product or whatever you're doing and it could really help you will help get the word out on you and also make sure you are taking note of these people's twitter handles all you know local journalists on tv um, all kinds of all kinds of uh, the local cable people they are 
easiest. That's that's the low hanging fruit. You want to get to those people. I ha in in the county I live in, there's a there's a county news channel, and everybody watches it. Tons of people, and so there are Twitter handles under every single journalist's name. Okay, retweet their their important tweets and reply to their questions and their requests. Give them real tips. If you share a tool you use that you find invaluable, you don't think they're going to be grateful? They will be grateful. And then it's all part of building a relationship with the press. Okay, step two, you want to make use of the agencies and organizations that are out there to help uh, make connections. So, and in my book, How to Promote Your Children's Book, I list a lot of organizations, and some of the one, one of the ones that I really like is Harrow, Help a Reporter Out. And if you're a reporter, you have to subscribe, but if you're a small business person, as we are as writers, right, we're entrepreneurs, or as I like to say, I'm a writerpreneur, I'm a writer who's an entrepreneur, um, you can get listed for free. And what, the, what happens is, is that news agencies will look through this list and they will, um, they'll see wh how you described yourself and if you're, what your expertise is. And if, for example, if I say I'm an expert in video creation for the tech wary, or the tech fearful, they might call me if, if some new product comes out or if somebody's, you know, some big person comes out and says, only people who know how to do video should be making videos. And they get me on and go, that is not true. I can teach anybody how to make video. So you know how, how that kind of thing happens. So it's very, very, uh, it's, it's important. And, you know, Harrow w will probably um, lean more toward people with a strong Alexa rating and, and higher income levels, but they, if, if you're unique and you have a, a really good description on your profile there, they, you, they could snag you. So, so go check out Harrow. Um, all right, uh, so make a list there um, uh, on all the connections that you have with the press. And I want you to... Um, if you if you want to really kick it up a notch, you might want to take out a paid subscription to things like PR Web, um, and again make a list of in Excel or whatever Word, and not only the organizations and agencies that you follow and use, but the people, the reporters and the bloggers and all those people, and include their contact details, what kinds of articles have they written, what kinds of things have they covered, what, what are their interests, and, it, and their actual interviews. Make notes, because you're not going to remember them later, okay? And um, all of, and their URLs and all that kind of stuff. And as you grow, and as your business grows, and as, as you grow as a writer, um, you will be surprised a year or two ago, oh, that person wrote about, uh, you know, I always go to the plumber example. Plumbing supplies. Well, suppose you, suppose there's a big, uh, a, a dam bursts, and they need to know the one tool that would fix the dam, I don't know. And you, and you know, because you wrote a book on it, a non-fiction book on great plumbing supplies. <laughs> you know, and so you call that report and say, you know what, I know you wrote this article a couple of years ago on blah, blah, blah. I have the answer. And they come to you and they say, you know, there was this dam broke and they didn't know what tools to use to fix it and this, and then they quote you because you wrote a book on it. So, um, so you can also hire a press agency, or a, a PR agency I mean, um, or a press agent, but that's pretty expensive. Unless you are making tons of money, they cost thousands and thousands of dollars. But the good news is, you can hire a virtual assistant, and a lot of people in our business, people who are independently writing or or being uh, or selling their books to traditional publishers, a lot of people. I don't know why, but a lot of people don't know about virtual assistants. But if you guys um, are doing anything with me in Video Idiot Bootcamp or have purchased any of my products for writers, you know Kelly. My uh, well, we're trying to find a better title for her than assistant. She's my She's my savior, really. <laughs> she saves me. She's incredible. And I have never met her in person, sadly. She lives 
half a country away from me. But we meet all the time on Google Plus in face to face. I confide in her, and I, I love Kelly. I'm always saying to her, TGFK, thank God for Kelly. I mean, she's incredible, and she's a virtual assistant. And so there are all kinds of ways you can hire virtual assistants, and they there are people who specialize in PR, so um, public relations, and, and they can send out press releases for you, and they know who to contact. So you can hire people um, who aren't gigantic companies for that. And make sure you get references, and you know you can go to Odesk and, and do things like that to hire somebody individually. Okay, so step three is you want to make a plan. You want to have a plan of attack. You just don't want to go forward. You want to have, you want to strategize this. So anything you're going to do, any kind of marketing plan, you need to strategize. I like to use mindmeister.com. I even have a paid subscription. It's only like five bucks a month. It's wonderful. And it's great for brainstorming. Um, I also have a four-quarter plan for my business. Things like that is great. Are great to is great to do. Are great to do. Is great to. Do. But um, you know there are a lot of opportunities to do. And how are you going to remember it all? You've got to write this stuff down. And uh, let me see. Let me look at my notes. Um, oh yeah, I have an example here. Remember to tell them about cooking. So if you were uh, if you were a caterer and you had this big party. You wouldn't just wait till the night of and go, oh, let's go to the market and bring some food. No. you, Or even if you're having your own party, you would write down all the food that you were going to make, right? And you would write down all the ingredients you needed to buy. You'd sit down. Well, first you'd even plan your menu. Then you would get the recipes, and then you would write down all the ingredients you had to buy, and then you would uh, decide which garnish goes with what, and what wines and hors d'oeuvres and desserts complement each thing and you'd factor in prep time and cooking time and decide how many people you needed to serve the thing and everything, right? You'd cost out everything and, and you'd also be keeping in mind like what your client liked and all what their guests liked and how you would serve it, all that stuff, right? You need to plan out everything in your plan of attack for your marketing campaign so and your press campaign. So. You want to know all your players, your journalists, and your local media, and your online media, and your bloggers, and all that. You want to know how each one operates. Like, how, what if somebody takes off the month of December for the holidays, or the month of July for summer? Sometimes people do that. I'm thinking of doing that. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> um, what you want to know what their preferences are and what their strengths are. Maybe somebody doesn't uh, blog at all about children's books or plumbing supplies or whatever. You don't want to approach somebody just because they have a big blog and have a lot of readers. It's it's not just, let's, let me do a shotgun approach. You want to really uh, fi put a fine point on it. Uh, how to reach them. How do they prefer to be reached? Do they want to be... I don't like it when um, people... Uh, I, I prefer when people contact me through my contact form rather than uh, get me through my private email because it's I, I might lose that I might I might miss that so I know if it goes through support I know Kelly will catch it I totally I get so much junk mail in my private email that I can completely miss it so I much prefer getting contact through my contact on my on my uh, blog on my website okay so um, You've got to strategize. It'll it also make you let much less anxious. I have one coaching client um, who was very anxious about everything, and once everything was written down, it it's amazing what writing things down will do for you. I have that same issue. Okay, let's go. Um, step four: press releases. I I really hate press releases. I write them and then I don't send them. It's it's I really you know Doctor Heal like thyself kind of thing. <laughs> um, but it's a standby. It's an old standby. You have to understand what they are and what they are not to use them effectively. They are not an advertisement for your business. What they are is they are a helping tool for a reporter. It's a shortcut. It's basically a pre-written article. So you want to be able to provide this tool for an 
a reporter so they could just copy and drop it into their blog or their uh, newspaper or whatever. And so a press release always consists of the bare bones of everything the journalist needs to know, like who, what, where, when, and why, and they have a traditional format. But you also need to include your basic, you know, with that who, what, where, when, and why, you also need to include whatever the, each publication media channel likes to have for their particular press releases. So you have to go and do your research and find out what their guidelines are. Um, and you some some places have guidelines about whether they'll accept images or not. So you got to check that out. Um, oh, and also delivery. Do they want it by fax, uh, the old way, or do they accept it by email? And who you're supposed to send it to, the reporter, him or herself, or by or the department, or the editor, or whatever. Um, you want to keep your headline under 140 characters so they can be tweetable and seen in their entirety on Twitter, not half of it. Um, let's see. A and you can have a press release link on your page, uh, you know, pages and your, your press page on your website, which you should have, a, a media kit on your site. Um, you want to be very direct on your press release. Um, for example, you instead of having you know dog in hair, instead of uh, having a family leaves for you know sizable fortune to pet, uh, you you want to have specifics. German Shepherd inherits thirty billion, so something like that. Um, and you want to speak to the person, the intended reader. So instead of something like donations will be accepted upon entry, you want you can help by donating five dollars at the door. Um, all right, you want an angle, you want a hook. So you know news stories should be news. You want a hook. So for example, that when I was talking about the dam breaking, you can talk about how you invented that particular tool when you were plumbing because um, you once, whatever, you once uh, had a flood in your basement or you know something like that and you saved uh, an animal who was down there. I don't know. You have to, you have to figure out a hook. You can, you can, you can make a, a story up like um, I saw this story uh, somewhere, somebody told me, uh, I can't remember I think I got access to the story. So, for example, um, Killer Eel not expected at Duck Derby instead of join us for the Memorial Day Duck Derby. So that's more fun. You can make it fun, okay? So, all right, and you want to use SEO. You know, I'm always talking about this. Do your keyword research and all that stuff. And, again, I, you know, I, 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 if you know me, you know I hate keyword research. You can hire somebody for that, too, if, you, if you're like me and you don't like that. Um, you want to include at least two quotations. Uh, you can quote yourself in third person, and and you want the you want it to read like a news story. So remember to do it in third person. Um, you want to include the one quote from an interested party, like a customer or uh, somebody who's talking about the book or you in the third person, like you know we knew about this, blah blah blah. We Back to the eel example, uh, we 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 want we had a great time in that swimming hole. And we always uh, felt something nibbling at our toes, but we thought it was the fish. Said you know Jane Jones, you know something like that. Um, and if you have your own quote, um, you can say um, Sue Smith said, "Well, once I thought I saw a giant eel in the pond, but it wasn't." in May because we thought the eels didn't, I'm giving you a terrible example, this one off the top of my head, but you know what I'm saying, third person quote, okay, third person quote, <laughs> alright, um, embedding a video or uploading a photo, um, should come up with that quote earlier, <laughs> uh, some sites a 
allow this, some don't, again, ask them. Um, it's video, you know me, video is great for SEO. It's fantastic. If you have a book trailer or any kind of video, make sure to link it back to your book, to your site. If you have a photo, um, make sure it conforms to the publication's size and format guidelines. That's important. Um, and of course you want it to be professional quality. And so that they can print it, okay? Um, and know the audience. Uh, you want to have a great press release, but if it's not the audience, um, like I said before, they're not going to they're not going to print it. They won't. The, no, the audience won't read it. So if you're writing for Plumbers Are Us publication and you've written something for children's writers, the Plumber Are Us publication readers aren't going to read it. So. You know, have to know who your reporter's readers are. Uh, let's see my notes here. What else have I not gotten to? Um, I'm way over time, too. I've gone 20 minutes. Um, you want to be available for interviews. So I've, I love this uh, thing. If you want to have people just click and make an appointment with you, get on uh, Google Calendars, sign up for this incredible free thing called youcanbook.me and it connects to your Google Calendar. It's fantastic. It's how people make appointments with me. Um, my clients. It's fantastic. Uh, so, um, last, I'm going to go real quick. Uh, there's no questions in here, so um, in addition, okay, so podcasts, of course, you know, I've got my Brain Burps About Books podcast. So podcasts are a great way to get the word out on your stuff. So approach podcasts that uh, are looking for radio guests. You know, um, there's radioguestlist.com. Um, you can search directories. There's tons of, use Google search, you know, find Podcasts that are looking, actively looking, there are a lot of them. You can get podcast guests via Harrow. And um, the, let's see, I have a couple of things listed. Go through iTunes and do searches through there for your topic. There should be, if podcast is good, they should have listed their keywords in their description. So based on what you've written, you can do searches online on Google. Remember, iTunes is a search engine, so make sure you go in there and do your search. Uh, do in industry focus stations and podcasters um, and contact them for a list of upcoming topics. You know, um, let's see. And um, oh yeah, and be prepared when you go on the podcast. Okay. Uh, you also want to make sure that you show that your host a that you're a good guest because if you're a good guest you will be asked back you don't want to show up your host um, I've been I've been on a podcast where I was made to wait for two hours I didn't like that I will never go back to that podcast I will I've been asked to um, I've also had been on a podcast where I have uh, been made to wait with dead air, and it was very awkward. And that's probably not somebody I would want to be interviewed by again either. So when when you are a guest, you want to be treated well, and you want to treat the host well too. You want to uh, entertain your host's audience, but um, you want to also make sure that you publicize publicize your episode and support the episode by getting the word out and helping to make that episode popular because that will get you invited back so you will be creating your own visibility online when you get the word out on your work and you'll be you'll be doing a great service for your book or your work or whatever and 
you're going to do great. And I have full confidence in you in getting the word out, connecting with uh, people online, and I, I'm very uh, sure you'll do it. And why aren't you asking me any questions? <laughs> Okay, well, if you're not asking any questions, we're pretty much at the end, and I've given you a lecture for almost 30 minutes. So, you guys, we got people here. We got your peoples. We got the peeps. All right. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.